Welcome to another edition of the SMC Journal Podcast, the show that's all about systems engineering and IT today. We talk about performance, security, observability, monitoring, testing, what have you. We talk about it all. I'm Scott Moore, your host, and I appreciate you joining me today. One of the things we do talk about more than ever, it seems like, is observability. And every time I turn around, I'm hearing about different kinds of observability, like data observability and pipeline observability. So there's always another observability startup seemingly popping up. And such is the case today. We're going to talk about a company called Ground Cover. Now, I found this article as I was scrolling through my daily feed. It's an article from Forbes talking about the new Israeli startup that's building the next generation observability stack. Well, of course, the last time I heard about a cool new Israeli startup company, they were called Mercury Interactive and turned out pretty cool um, for my career. Anyway, I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about. But this article right here is talking about this company, Ground Cover, and how they are exploiting a feature in the Linux kernel called the EBPF, the Extended Berkeley Packet Filter. You're going to hear a lot about EBPF this year. I think I even mentioned that in 2023. Uh, we've, we're going to have multiple shows that talk about EBPF and taking advantage of that feature in the Linux kernel. And Kubernetes, more than ever, makes that more mainstream. We'll talk about that on another show. But um, this particular company, Ground Cover, uh, uses eBPF to intercept the traffic flowing back and forth throughout the OS, and that's how it reports its observability metrics. And it's called the next generation of observability. So I wanted to find out more about that. So I thought, what better way to do that than just invite the co-founder and CEO uh, of the company to talk about that. So let's bring him on right now. Shahar, welcome to the SMC Journal podcast. It's good to have you. Hey, Scott. Happy to be here. So I'm hearing a lot of inf uh, information about ground cover and about eBPF. And I, I came across this article that mentioned you and I said, I should have you on the show. Why don't you introduce yourself and the company ground cover? Yeah, happy to. Um, Ground Cover has been up and running for about a year and a half. Basically, what we're doing is reinventing what an application performance monitoring solution or an APM should be using eBPF. We're very focused on cloud native um, and kind of environments so this, such as Kubernetes. That's our focus. We're trying to provide a very modern, very different value of how people experience an APM solution, integrate it, and kind of experience it all the way through end to end using VPF, which is a really cool technology that I, I assume we'll cover later. Um, my background and my co-founder's background for many years has been around R&D leadership and kind of on the other side of, you know, worrying about production and caring about things falling uh, while you're sleeping and stuff like that. So definitely been the user of these tools and kind of, you know, experienced uh, open source tools and other vendor based solutions over the years. and. There's specific pain points which we came um, to the point of, you know, creating ground cover that we truly believe in. We feel there's a clear echo from, you know, developers, SRE, DevOps in the community and, and you know, in the industry about what's not working as well in application performance monitoring. And we hope to solve it in a few different ways. So that's kind of ground cover in a nutshell. So let's talk about eBPF because I'm hearing uh, this from every, every time I go to a, like a KubeCon conference or something. You can't get away from it. It's everywhere right now, and it's becoming a bigger and bigger deal because I think Kubernetes is sort of making it mainstream. Can you talk to our audience about how important eBPF is to Kubernetes deployed applications? And then as a technology, how big do we think it's going to be? Yeah, I mean, so eBPF, like uh, most very interesting technologies, it's not new. I mean, it's been, you know... Uh, kind of reaching its boiling temperature for a while now. And, and now it's definitely uh, a very, very interesting technology. I think before we kind of dive into observability, let's just mention for a second what is eBPF. eBPF is the ability to kind of run your business logic or basically run, you know, kind of a small application in a sandbox environment inside the Linux kernel, um, which sounds scary, but let's just uh, focus on what it can actually do. Uh, it can bring a lot of benefits to different vertic verticals in the industry. One is high performance networking. eBPF has been 
kind of sweeping uh, the market and what's what's future service meshes are going to be look like, going to look like what's future kind of uh, you know network traffic at high scale is going to is going to look like uh, in in environments such as kubernetes or other environments it's been uh, very impactful in security to allow um, maybe the modern agent of what security is all about in you know container security and workload security and stuff like that and you know, observability, it's, it's, it's now rising to the point where we think it's already uh, very mature to, to replace common sense, uh, com kind of the commodity sensors of code instrumentation or SDK instrumentation. Before you had to uh, kind of get the developer to work for you, integrate your SDK as a vendor into the code. Uh, it can be, you know, a custom SDK, open telemetry based SDK, it doesn't really matter. Let them work for you in integrating that uh, SDK. It can be very simple in some languages, very, very manual in others. It, it is now replaced by an out-of-band agent that can just run in the Linux kernel and kind of monitor everything that's going on in the user space. So from a ground cover perspective, is that your diff differentiator in the market? Is that you're taking full advantage of eBPF or is there more to it than that? So, I mean, basically ground cover is based on two pillars that we think make a very big difference. One is eBPF because uh, it provides us with two very important things. One is the zero time to value, basically, instead of working weeks and, you know, integrating different teams to push an SDK integration into, into the code. Right now you can do it with one person on a thousand people company and it will take a minute. And you would also get a hundred percent coverage because we don't care if it's, it's legacy code, if it's a third party, uh, you know, component, we will kind of instrument everything. So that's, one pillar, but eBPF is a, for us, it's a, you know, open source solution that we believe the community should drive forward and we're definitely contributing back to that community. So looking ahead in two or three years, it's definitely not right now, but in two or three years, it's going to be hopefully a commodity product on the toolbox of many developers of many different shapes. It can be ad hoc tools all the way through, you know, an APM based on that. So it, we think that it can't be the only differentiator for what a modern APM is. So the other part of ground cover, I mean, we're definitely one of the best teams in the world in EBPF, but I think it's just because we have to, it's a very raw technology. We have to push it all the way through to provide the APM value that we're looking for. The other pillar is saying, let's rebuild the architecture around what an APM is. There's so many pain points around the scalability and, and, and kind of pricing model of these solutions and the, and the reason for that is that they're built in a centralized fashion that everything all the data you collect is sent back to being digested and kind of um, you know work through for insights and you you get to pay for all this data uh, we know it from metric cardinality which is you know can surprise you suddenly and you have to you know let the R&D team make that trade off and say, let's reduce this cardinality because we're paying so much for that. And it could be traces where you say, let's go down for 5% sampling to 1% sampling. We just can't, can't take it anymore. Even though all we wanted was, you know, the, the metrics over time of error rate for a specific mm -hmm. API or something, which is much more concentrated than the actual spans you're storing. Um, and ground cover is basically, basically kind of reinventing this architecture based on distributed model of saying, it's not, it doesn't make sense to send all the, all this to a vendor's backend and, you know, digest it there. We're digesting it and, and kind of uh, making, uh, making our way through the insights in the actual agent, which means we're, most of the data doesn't even leave your Kubernetes node. Uh, we're saving, you know, on traffic, on storage, on a lot of different stuff. We can say, basically, you can store much less to get the same insights. And it allows us to break the trade-off between visibility, depth, and cost. In some cases, it allows us to even store deeper or high, more high granularity data because we're saying we can choose inside the agent when it's actually interesting to store something. So, for example, we can store payloads of failed requests because we're saying this is a specific request that is, is interesting to you. Over time, our agent will create all the matrix that you need to set us lows or whatever, but this is a specific raw event you want to get all the way down to, uh, to understanding. You don't have to make this choice at the back end and pay for pay this price for all the flowing through the system. So that's what ground cover is about. And that's, that's how our pricing model also, also looks. It's a flat price per node, which allows us to uh, provide predictable pricing uh, for teams out there, which I think is a really, really major pain point, uh, which causes a lot of people to not trust or leave uh, the current vendors. Uh, it's not specifically the product, it's the, the onboarding, the difficulty of the onboarding and the pricing, uh, the fear from the unpredictable pricing, basically. So 
obviously this is you're not an open source project uh ground cover isn't but you are uh contributing to open source with a project called coretta can you talk a little bit about that as well yeah i mean ground cover is not open source but we do uh want to uh, contribute back to the ebpf community and say uh, um, guys you should be aware of what ebpf can do for you and that's what coretta is about basically coretta is a small layer inside what ground cover really is uh, it's a kind of a piece of what our agent can do and and it allows you to create an ad hoc dependency map of your cluster who's talking to who what's the actual dependencies between the microservices running in the cluster using an EV, a very lightweight ebpf agent that is deployed using coretta so basically it's kind of a taste of how powerful ebpf can be you you invest 10 seconds in deploying the daemon set and suddenly you see you know hundreds, hundreds of microservices communicating internally inside a cluster or outside the cluster you can use it to uh, figure out if there is any security threats of, you know, ports open to the outside that you haven't known on or specific dependencies that can help you investigate root cause in kind of knowing the, the flow of what actually happens in production. Uh, most, most productions out there are not as clear as, as we would imagine. Clearly it's, uh, it's, it's sometimes surprising. So we're saying a dependency map is definitely an interesting part in what an APM is, uh, how an APM can help you. Here's how EPF can do it so easily in a production where there's you know uh, 10 different languages and 15 different teams writing code which you've you've otherwise worked so hard to get um we're, we're kind of kind of trying to show developers how powerful this technology can be uh, give them a taste of that. where do you see what's your vision for the product do you see this as viable contenders to the data dogs and the dynatraces of the world where, where do you plan to go with it I have a lot of respect for Datadog and other solutions. I think the value is very clear to developers. Ground Cover is not trying to say uh, an APM value isn't important. We're trying to say there's a barrier so high people don't have this value and we need to find a way to break it. Uh, but I am also very respectful of what they're doing. So it will. I know uh, it will take more than kind of one punch to move that needle. It, does, it, it won't take one differentiator to say, you know, we, we're just doing EPF. Because I think it's very clear for the community and also for ground cover, the data dog and new relic and everybody is moving there. Uh, we hope we will do it better, but it's not enough. So we're definitely bringing in together a lot of different, uh, you know, punches into this mix of what we do differently in ground cover. I do believe that's the, the offering of the future APM and the risk and reward in ground cover is that, yeah, we're aiming to not be a psychic of data dog, but say we can either replace data dog in specific situations where uh it doesn't provide enough value because uh, you can't integrate it all the way through or it's too expensive or, and a lot of different solutions like that we're kubernetes native so if you're a, a pure kubernetes shop it will definitely be much more clear than your current apm experience because uh, you know z generation developers born into kubernetes they're they're not used to this language or kind of uh, uh expressions they see in datadog it's still a bit far from them and on the other hand, we can also access so many parts of the market using Prometheus, Grafana, uh, trying to integrate open telemetry, you know, not working with these vendors because of these problems. That's where we see ground cover as an enabler. Uh, so it's not just being head to head with Datadog, it's, it's, it's enabling the APM for more parts of the, of the industry to just get reaches. So yeah, definitely aiming high, but we think uh, there's a lot of interesting technological gaps that we're using to back that up. Well, I think that's great. If somebody wants to get more involved with ground cover, start using it, check it out. What's the easiest way for them to get started? So uh, we're trying to say you should experience it. You should experience the power of UPF. You can, you should see how awesome this technology really is and what we can do for you. So we have a very generous free tier, uh, which is even unlimited to the size of the cluster. You can run it on a huge production cluster and still get all the value, all the feature features ground covers can, can offer. So we're definitely welcoming people to our free tier, to our Slack community, to engage with us, ask questions about the technology, kind of test it out in their own data to see if it can be helpful for them compared to what they're doing today. So I think going to our website and, and kind of clicking the start free and installing the command line uh, that, that you know provides value in kind of one or two minutes, that will be the best way to experience what an EVPF APM can be and what ground cover is. It sounds pretty simple to install. I like the the way the website looks too. It's very creative. It's more, uh, I don't know, it doesn't seem so corporate. You know, it's got a good creative feel to it. So I'm sure yeah. that's on purpose. Um, well, thank you so much for being on the show today. We'll make sure that we include those links on the show notes and on the YouTube video when people watch it. 
and just keep up with us. You're able to come back anytime you want and talk about some of the new features that you are adding in the future. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me. All right. It's very interesting to hear about all of these observability uh, features that are popping up within existing platforms and new platforms arising around observability all the time. So it's an exciting realm to actually follow. Uh, I kind of think about it in the terms of like in the load testing days when there were all these new load testing vendors. And then you wonder who's going to reign supreme in all of this. You know, this is a different problem that we're tackling with observability with environments that aren't uh, static. They're not necessarily stable. They're they're all over the place and keeping track of all that is getting more and more complex. So how companies deal with this, how they rein in all that information and process it and find the issues and fix them uh, quicker uh, is, is an interesting thing to watch from a, just like an analyst or a podcasting perspective. So I'd like to know what you think about ground cover and what we talked about today. You can reach me through social media on many platforms. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, the websites are smcjournal.com, but if you click on that QR link, it'll take you to a bio with several links to me. I'm very easy to find. You can also email me very easily at my new email address, Hey Scott at smcjournal.com would love to hear from you. Would also love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can either click on that link uh, that I've got posted there or click on the uh, QR code with your phone to look it up. And I would appreciate you checking that out, clicking on the like, give me a like on this video and then subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more of this, uh, this podcast comes out at least once a week. And I've got maybe some live shows that I'm thinking about doing, as well as we have the performance tour uh, coming out every month. So I hope you'll enjoy that and some of the parody videos that we're going to be coming out with. I got to tend to Agent 503. He's put on the captain's hat. Now he thinks he's Captain Mercury for some reason. Uh, but we're gonna I'm going to attend to that now and get him changed over. Hope to see you on the next SMC Journal podcast. For now, this is Scott Moore saying thank you and bye-bye.